Why exactly did the Irish government send out messages in different languages asking people to come to Ireland and receive free accommodation during a housing crisis? This is Ben Scallon and you're watching Gripped Media. Before we start the video, if you want to support Gripped and our work, make sure to click like, subscribe and comment, even if you have absolutely nothing to say. Just comment whether you prefer winter or summer or something. Because by liking, commenting and sharing, this channel will get boosted in the algorithm and get seen by more people. So if you want to see this channel grow, just take two seconds right now to like, comment and do your part to support independent journalism. And so with that said, on to the video. Imagine if you were put in charge of a country which had a decade-long housing and homelessness crisis and imagine if everyone was looking to you for a solution. Now, what would you do in that situation? Of course, there are lots of things you could do and we could argue all day about what the right policies might be, but the one thing you probably wouldn't do is go out of your way to advertise to the world that you were giving out free houses and encourage people to come here before you even had a solution to the current problem. Of all the potential policies a person might want to pursue, I think we can all agree that that one would be bordering on insane. And yet that's exactly what the Irish government, in all of their wisdom, has done. As Integration Minister Roger O'Gorman TD tweeted last year, Today we are making a new commitment to all those seeking refuge in Ireland. We will end direct provision. Read our plan here. Now I wonder what this plan says. When you click into that link and you read the government's PDF, what message is the minister trying to send out to the world and all the would-be asylum seekers around the planet exactly? Maybe we should take a look and find out. The document reads, This new approach will end congregated and institutional living. Instead it focuses on supporting integration from day one. Applicants will initially reside in a reception and integration centre with own door or own room accommodation where they will be assigned a caseworker and receive wraparound supports, healthcare and education. Within a short period of time, this support will extend to include access to housing and employment in order to prepare them and enable them to live independently within the community. After a four month period, residents will move to accommodation within the community. So the government is offering free own door accommodation within the community along with free food, healthcare, education and employment. And that brings us to perhaps the most relevant point, the fact that they advertise this in different languages to people around the world, from Arabic to French to Georgian and more. Now, why is this particularly significant? Well, one of the languages that the government advertised in is Albanian. This is noteworthy because there has not been a war on Albanian soil in over 20 years since the 1990s. And not only that, but in 2019, just a couple of years ago, Leo Varadkar as Taoiseach admitted that Albanians with fake documents were illegally traveling to Ireland and falsely claiming asylum in large numbers. As reported by Extra.ie at the time, Leo Varadkar has spoken out against illegal immigration in Ireland and said that the government will quote not tolerate it. The Taoiseach said Georgian and Albanian migrants traveling to Ireland with fake documents are the big driver behind what he says is a rise in asylum seekers coming to the country. So that was in 2019 and then just two years later the same government is advertising online in Georgian and Albanian that if you can get to Ireland and claim asylum you'll be given a free house, education and and so on. So they can't possibly argue that they don't know better or that they're unaware of the problem of scammers. They know perfectly well that Ireland has an illegal immigration problem of people making false asylum claims and yet they deliberately decided to incentivize that behavior and ring the dinner bell to the whole world during a housing and homelessness crisis. And bear in mind that in order to qualify for these benefits, you don't have to prove that you're an actual genuine refugee. All you have to do is say the magic words of, I seek asylum, and that's it. An asylum seeker is just someone who says that they're seeking asylum. It doesn't prove that their claim is true or anything. I could walk out of this studio right now and fly to London to claim refugee status if I wanted to, but that doesn't make my claim legitimate. And that might help to explain why the majority of those seeking asylum in Ireland are single adult males, according to the minister. Is there a reason for this? Why? We're seeing more and more centres just accommodate only male asylum seekers. 
because uh, a majority of international protection applicants are single males, uh, and that's, I suppose, that, that is, the, it is the necessity to, to provide uh, accommodation for them. So what has the outcome of this been? What happens exactly when you advertise to the world that you're giving away free accommodation like confetti? Well, here are the asylum applications to Ireland up until last year when O'Gorman sent his tweets out. So this is roughly what we'd expect in a normal year, more or less. And here are the applications so far this year, excluding Ukrainians. So this is not including Ukrainian refugees. This is how many non-Ukrainian asylum seekers Ireland has received this year compared to previous years. This is people from Georgia and Somalia and so on. According to the Irish government's International Protection Office, non-Ukrainian asylum claims are 516% higher this year compared to last year. So taking a step back and looking at all of these facts, the question the question is this, is it possible that there is some connection between the Irish government running all over the world offering people free houses in different languages and then the following year asylum claims from those countries increasing by over 500%? Could these two facts be related somehow? We actually did an interview with an Egyptian asylum seeker who told us that he came to Ireland so he could get a visa when he heard about the government's policy. I came from uh, England. I live in England around 15 years. I work there uh, in black, uh, black market. But when I, when I hear about uh, Ireland and I hear about the justice minister in, in, in uh, Ireland, uh, the open uh, for everyone for, to get uh, a visa uh, for asylum seeker uh, and I think it's, it's a good country to, to get a visa from here. So do you think then the reason you came to Ireland from England was the opportunities that were available in Ireland? I think yes, yeah. If you want to watch that interview in full, it can be viewed here on our social media. But the point is, the government wants to wash its hands of this crisis and say that they are simply fulfilling their obligations and nothing more. Well, as a government, we have, uh, I suppose, a, a moral and legal obligation to provide um, to, to provide uh, accommodation for either people in the international protection process or people in the uh, in the um, uh, fleeing the, the war in Ukraine. But that's not true. They aren't just helping people who need help. They're encouraging people to come. They're going out of their way to create the circumstances which have led to the current crisis. With homelessness figures hitting record highs, the government have voluntarily decided to do this. And that is something which demands an explanation. Please like and share this video, and if you enjoyed it, please consider signing up for a monthly donation via the link on screen to help us produce more content like this. Alternative media like Gript needs all the assistance it can get, and every donation goes a long way. As always, thanks for watching.